Hello. Turn my mic on as usual. <laughs> All right, what's up, everybody? First, we're going to make sure hello. that you can actually hear us as usual. First time in chat, what's up, Maiden here, 906? All right, let us know if you can hear us. Let us know if you can see us. Let us know if you can feel us. And <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, I did the thing that I said I was going to do. I'm very excited about it. Um, I do have closed captionings working. So I want everyone to try it, see if it works for you. Um, there should be something on your screen that says stream CC. Um, you should be able to click it and kind of configure it how you want. Um, that's what I'm doing right now, actually, just to see what it looks like. I want small text and I'm just wonder if it, it's so interesting. Yeah, CC. Okay. It looks like it's working. The close hearse What's up the close hearse. They said, I can see and hear you made in here. Said we can Liz Kiwi. I can hear and see you also feeling happy alley vibes. Yeah, CC. All right, cool. So, <sighs> The one big thing out of the way that usually is our issue <laughs> is going to be good. So now that we know we can hear me, we got to check for Dorlin. Dorlin, go ahead. Talk to the people. Let's see if we can hear your mic. Hello, people. It's good to be back. I hope you can hear me well. We know you can see me. Oh, someone said I can't see the CC, though. Why? No. Uh, all right, let's hmm. see. I it was working last time. I don't know why it wouldn't be showing up now. It's also showing up on mine, like as I'm talking. So I wonder see. if it is working for anybody out there. Is anybody in the chat getting CC? Yeah, there should be a tiny little purple button or blue. If you can't see color, maybe it looks blue to you. Um, and it says stream CC, friend. you click on the button and then it'll show up. So not everyone needs CC. It could be distracting, but I just want to make sure that it's working for everyone. So Dr. Tony Fass said you have to click the button on the middle right and it works. All right. All right. Awesome. So it looks like it does work. So now we know if you need the CC during the stream, if you cannot hear what's on the screen or if it's just easier for you to process. Uh, what I'm saying, if you can see the words, I'm one of those people, uh, the option is now there and I have made our stream more accessible. I'm very excited about that. Yay. <laughs> I know, right? Like, oh my God, yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right. So can't get CC with a keyboard though. Okay. I, oh, you mean it's not keyboard accessible? What a surprise. <laughs> Um, oh, no. Yeah, that, that'd be asking for a lot. I mean, it shouldn't be asking for a lot, but yeah, I'm sure you can. Yeah. Especially if you are a deafblind user of a Braille display, you it has to be keyboard accessible for you to be able to actually participate. That's a bummer. There must be a way to to make it accessible. Yeah, I, and let me not say must because it's a little plug-in, right? But I would hope so. Um, Dorlin. Do you have a, can you hold up your mic a little? I want to see the angle of it. It might be backwards. Is there like a little uh, my backwards? mesh top on it? Oh it's no, it's mesh. right. It's good. Okay. Bring it, it a little be, closer. The mesh should port towards me, right? Yeah. Mesh should part, point towards you. It seems to, my the little legs on my stand are not as taut as they once were. Okay. I probably need to just turn it up to a little bit. I'm scooting in. How about that? A little better? Yeah, that's good. All, All right. right. So the CC is in a weird position that it wasn't in when we tested it. So if you click on it, it covers Dorland's face. I don't know why it's doing that this time. Um, last time it was just like going across the bottom, which is nice. I don't know if that's a setting that I have control over. 
Um, but if everyone's looks like this, I'm assuming I'm the one controlling this, which is strange. We're gonna have to just look at that for next time. So my apologies if that is me that put it there or if it, I don't know if that's automate, automated or not. Um, but I think there's a way to customize where this stream CC shows up. But I was really excited. So yeah, I wanted to show everybody that I finally did it uh, and we'll, we'll get it better next time. Um, all right, so for anyone new here, um, one of the things that I do that may be a little different is I read all the comments in the chat, um, not as I get them, but periodically, I try to do them as they happen, but um, I'm always gonna read all the comments in the chat so that Dorlin, who is who cannot see the screen visually, uh, so that she knows who's in the chat, what they're saying, um, and she has the same experience as us. So that's why you'll hear me be very verbose about what's in the chat. All right, so let's, let's get started. Let's talk about what we're gonna talk about today. I have a nice little PowerPoint that I made that'll keep us on track. <laughs> there we go. I think someone showed me that I could make this bigger and I don't remember how I did it. <laughs> It blew my mind when I did it, but now I don't know. Maybe I could just make it into a slideshow. Hopefully that doesn't mess everything up. All right, so welcome back, everybody. It has been a nice little hiatus. I hope that everyone had a restful time at the very least. Um, I know for us, it was very busy. Uh, we were doing a lot of different things. We're going to talk a little bit about what we got into on our break today as well. Um, but I just want to say welcome back. It's it's good to be back. It's good to have everybody in the building. Um, this community is so special to us because everyone's just so awesome and willing to help everyone. And the learning is super meaningful. So we're happy. All right, here are the things that we're going to be talking about today. Um, some of these we might not get to. Depends on how much time we have um, and what we cover. But first, we're going to talk about the updates to the schedule. So all of the things, all the times and the things that we're going to be talking about, essentially, um, where to find resources. So if you are a newbie here, if this is your first time in the stream, um, I would love for you to put in the chat like this is your first time because uh, this is the stuff that we're going to go over for you. We're going to go over them pretty briefly because we have like a whole one hour stream specifically on where all of our resources are and what this group is about. So if you need the link to that, just let me know and I'll pop it in the chat. But otherwise, we're just going to quickly go through like our GitHub and stuff. Um, we're also going to, like I said, talk about some updates. Uh, both Dorlin and I have some life updates that we want to share with y'all. Um, I want to do a small section of shout outs just to like some people who have been meaningfully contributing to the group. Um, and if we have time, and this is just if we have time and just if like people want to hang out and do it with us, um, me and Dorlin, we might do a little replit versus code pen um, duel <laughs> to see which one is more accessible. Um, and if we do that, It'll be one of those things where we are trying it for the first time. We will probably run into some technical difficulties and it'll be it'll be something else. <laughs> you know, it'll be one of those just sit with us and like, let's see if we can figure it out type thing. Uh, but that's just if we have time. Uh, we're going to also close it out probably before that with a question and answer. Just if anyone has any questions about the group, which you can always put in the chat and we'll answer. Or if you have any questions about accessibility in general, uh, a lot of people are usually career switchers and things like that. So yeah, that's what we'll be talking about. All right, so I'm gonna go through these uh, messages really fast. Kathy Coase, what's up Kathy Coase? Kathy, Kathy Coase said, hi everyone. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, Liz Ginger said, I'm having a bad hearing tetanus day, so I'll use Chrome as auto captioning. That's pretty cool. And it's they cool. also said, welcome all the new people. Awesome to see everyone. Made in Hair 906 said, this is my first time on the stream. I'm excited to be here. We're excited to have you, Made in Hair. 
Wolven, hey Wolven, first time, nice. Sinotech, Sinotech's in the building, y'all. Okay. <laughs> One of our OGs. <laughs> Sinotech said, I'm making a snack with coffee, so B BRB. Actually, y'all, I have a whole French press waiting for me to French press my coffee because I didn't make it yet. So, um, <laughs> excuse me while I do that. Uh, Dorlin, did you want to say anything before we get started? Uh, uh like, like what? what? <laughs> anything, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. It's, it's good, good to be, be back, back with, with everybody, everybody. That's, that's for sure. sure. I'm, I'm glad, glad that, that we're, we're here and had very, well, different, different issues, issues, but, but we, we got, got through them as always and are on here, here now. And if, if we, we do have time, time I, would I would definitely like to try code, code pin and, and replet, um, kind of test their accessibility live, I guess, if we get to it. Um, unless, unless I end up having to download, download something and restart the computer, the computer so, so we'll see. All right, they but, said that you're echoing and it's pro, let me, let me double check something. Oh, it's the screen capture. I think when I have screen capture on, I have to turn the sound off. So Dorlin, go ahead and speak again. I think that'll get rid of it. And if it doesn't, it's because I need to wear headphones and that makes me sad. Okay, hopefully you don't hear an echo now so we don't have to make Africa sad. <laughs> <laughs> the sensory echo, pain. Echo. Yes, no, hopefully no headphones are required. It's fixed, yes. All right, I Yay. have figured out this streaming thing. Y'all, man, if you, you know since the beginning. <laughs> I found some wood for you there. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. oh, You're good. You're an audio engineer now. I really am, y'all. Excuse me. All right, schedule updates. Schedule updates. We were doing this, what, every Thursday? Every Thursday. So our first season, for, for every anyone who was new, we did eight weeks of learning the CPAC, and we did every week. We might have missed a week, maybe, but it was pretty much every week, and we went hard. And a lot of us got the CPAC, so that was worth it. And then we started again in January, with the WAS, the Web Accessibility Specialist um, Body of Knowledge, which, which we've been learning and following along with. And I think we made it up to four weeks and it was just <laughs> a lot. Uh, we were both working on a lot of different things. Dorlin was working on the trusted tester. Braille, you're also doing a Braille transcribing class. Is that what it is? Yeah, a Braille transcribing course. Uh, yeah, uh, at the end of it, I hope to be a certified Braille transcriber through the Library of Congress. It's a program that's um, done distance learning and everything. It's 20 different lessons, and uh, the end of it is a 35-page Braille manuscript. And I'm on lesson 17 right now, guys, so I'm in it. <laughs> yeah, you're doing a lot. Uh all right, let's see what else is in here. Reading some comments. The close her said very nice. Kathy Code said cool. Lemon Lemonade Zebra. That's a cool name. First time in chat. <laughs> they said, I'm excited. I was able to catch this live. This is my first time here. I've been following you a bit, Kenya. I'm a school-based occupational therapist who desperately wants to switch careers and I'm learning about accessibility. I heard of you from 100 devs, been wanting to connect with you. Oh my gosh. That's wild because OMG. same, I was <laughs> literally a school-based OT who desperately wanted to switch careers and started 100 devs and did that. So you're, you're in the right place. That's really cool. Um, happy to have you here. Liz Ginger said, wow, Braille. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. We got to get the big screen on for this one. So. Dorlin got me the cutest, and I'm sorry, y'all know I'm on this um, counterfeit uh, Apple <laughs> Apple computer, and the camera is not good. But here is the Braille uh, necklace that Dorlin got me. It says "Read in Braille," and it has a little book on it that you can feel, and it's so cute. She has one on too. But yeah, speaking of Braille. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's contracted Braille. So it's the letter R, then the contraction for EA, which is just one dot, a dot two, and then a D, and then yeah, the little let me book. Get up close so everyone can actually see it. So 
I think the top right here, right? It's three lines across and then like one in the middle. I have to learn how to do the dot notation that you do. So it, yeah, it's, so you turn it on its side. So those dots, that first one, the R is dots one, two, three, going down the first column, dots one, two, three, and then dot five, which is the second uh, row in the second column. Mm -hmm. And then next to that is dot two, which is our EA contraction. And then a D, which is dots one, four, and five. Yep, I'm learning. I have my little, I still have my Braille alphabet thing that I got from Dorland's Well. And it shows me the Braille alphabet. And, you know, I'm going to attempt to learn this. <laughs> you can right. do it. One of these days. One of these days, oh my God, too many things, but it's it's gonna happen. I just know it in my soul. Uh, Liz, it was said, kind of a need to know thing for me, to be fair. What'd you say? <laughs> it was a need to know thing for me, Indeed. to be fair. Um, Liz said, "Lemonade Zebra from a fellow EDS as, <laughs> education specialist." I guess is what that is. The close her said, "100 devs representation." A A. Lemony, Lemonade Zebra said, I literally just walked out of work and have the Twitch stream listening in my car. <laughs> you know, you're not the only one who listens to us in their car. <laughs> A lot of people have told me that on road trips and other things, they kind of put us on in the background, which is very funny and interesting. I'm like, you guys are listening to us. That's so, that's so awesome. Um, Liz Ginger said, went down the eight dot rabbit, braille rabbit hole last week. Pretty pendants. Wolven said, very creative. Um, oh, the eight dot uh, Braille rabbit hole real quick. That's computer Braille. That's super cool, Liz. I, the com eight dot computer code gives one character per each character of the ASCII system. So it's a one for one system. And so computers don't have to do any translation. It's really cool. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Back so to comments. I love that you said that because um, I went over to Dorland's house uh I don't know, a couple months ago or something. And Dorlin was talking about Braille. And you were, when you explained it, I was like, this is like learning how to code. This is like learning a new language based off of what appears to be math to me because of the way that you were explaining it. And um, Braille is a nice little rabbit hole to go down if you want to. I'm just, I'm just going to say that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It totally is a code too. Braille is a code. So it's it awesome. Is. Uh, Liz so nicely has put a link in our chat. Um, what are refreshable uh, Braille devices? I'm guessing they wrote an article on this. Y'all know for our streams, we have our resource page that has all the links within the stream. Um, I'm gonna try my best to do them, but if someone in the chat uh, wants to help me with that, I'm gonna put that link in the... Um, in the chat and someone can grab it and just throw the links in there and we'll figure it out later. But let me do that right now on stream with y'all so you can see what I'm doing. Here is our beautiful list of links. They get updated every time. This was week two, week three, and I believe this is week four. So I'm just gonna throw that there for now. And then I'm gonna copy this and then throw this in the chat so that y'all have it. So if anyone wants to uh, grab the links as they get on there, I'd appreciate it, but I'll try my best. Uh, Wolven said, I sense a new hyper fixation for me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't need another one, but here I am that, I mean, Braille is so interesting. Okay, so we know that we have a different schedule because we believe that this will be a little bit more sustainable. Um, and give everyone kind of a break. A lot of us took a break in the group and have come back. So that's really nice that we're all back here. Um, so yeah, first and third Thursdays at 4 p.m. ish, because y'all know how it is. Um, <laughs> but when we go live, it should go to the Discord and let you know. What's up, Robo Dom? Um, oh, hey. All right, so the other thing we wanted to talk about was co-streamers. So one of the things we like to do on our stream is invite people to come hang out with us. So this is a pretty casual stream. Um, 
we don't really teach, we learn together, but sometimes we do have people who ha are really, really good at what they do, are very knowledgeable about specific topics. So they will come on and kind of teach us a thing or two. And for the things that Dorlin and I know very well, we do a little bit of teaching, but most of it's gonna just be all of us figuring it out together. And that means we may make mistakes and that's okay. So if you are someone who's interested in coming on the stream and hanging out and teaching us something uh, about a topic that's accessibility related or development related. So we have people who um, are in the accessibility field or we have people who are like developers or we have people who do both who are accessibility engineers and know both very top both topics very well. So that's one side of it. The other side of it is our, just our group in general, our members, any one of you all can come on and hang out with us while we do the stream. Um, just let me know and you can pop up. You can, you'll have your little picture in the, on the top with us. Um, and uh, I think last year, a few people came on who just wanted to hang out um, and we all just learned together and chatted while we were learning. So that was pretty fun. So that's always open. You can request that in the Discord. You can always DM me on any of the platforms if you're in the group. Um, so yeah, let me read some more of these comments. Robo said, hope everyone is doing well. Um, Liz Ginger said, one-handed typing, cat on lap and hand. Robo said, glad you're feeling better. Liz is feeling better. I don't know if you saw the Discord, but they're feeling better. I know you were going through it. And Robodom said, I make mistakes every day. <laughs> All right, let's go on to resources. So we wanted to get together so that everyone knows where everything is and how to access all the information you're gonna need for this experience. Um, we're assuming if you're here on a Thursday at 4.30 p.m., you really want to learn about accessibility. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to make sure that we give you all the resources for you to be able to do that. The first most important resource, which most of you probably have already seen, is going to be our Alley GitHub page. Okay, so this page is kind of like our... I don't know if you want to call it a Bible, but it's a place where we go if we need anything as far as the links go, because everything is kind of here. So in this, you'll see where and when we meet, which I need to update because it still says once a week on Thursdays. <laughs> um, but yeah, it has our links to the last cohort, which was all about the CPAC. It has the Twitch links uh, and then all the information about who this is for, prereqs you need, and then um, information on the CPAC, the WES, and the DHS Trusted Tester. And then the disclaimer that I like to tell everyone, um, this is not a structured accessibility learning course, it is a study group. <laughs> I like <laughs> to say that because I'm like, hey, you know, I'm not always right. Uh, we're learning this together. Um, we will meet weekly, more like bi-weekly, but life happens. So sometimes we may not meet, we may switch the dates, We'll let you know in the discord which is why it's imperative for you to be in the discord um if you want like up-to-date information about when we are streaming and any resources that we have to give all right official study plan is also in github and on discord so if we go to this link right here this will show you all the weeks and all the topics also, if you go into our Discord, which I'll just pull up for those who are haven't really looked through here, um, once you get in here, you're going to start here. You're going to introduce yourself. You're going to pick a role. So we have some we have four roles. We have a mentor, accessibility professional, web developer, designer and newbie. Once you do that, you'll get access to our general chat where we all hang out, our announcements where you'll get like a bot that tells you when I'm live. Um, oh, I see what happened. Bad bot, ugh, guys. Oh no. Okay, I made a bot today. I mean, I didn't literally make one, I configured one and it was my first time. So the at <laughs> is too far. So it didn't actually at everyone. It just has an at space and then everybody. So 
yeah, I did that wrong. That's why no one got in uh, any of the <laughs> announcements that we were live. So I'm gonna fix that later. But anyways, um, study materials. If you scroll up to study materials, boom, what do we have here? We have our whole timeline at a glance, right? So you know what we're working on. Uh, the thing about it is we may change this sometimes depending on what we feel makes sense. So some of these weeks may be like more than one week. It may take us a couple weeks. Like for example, intro to Aria, we're not going to do that in one week. It's probably going to take us a couple weeks, but this will give you a general idea of what the topics that we're talking about are. Um, there's also resources. We have a job opening page. We have an area where if you've taken the CPAC or any of the tests that we're working on, you can put how it went, how you passed it, um, things like that. And we have mentors who are always happy to help if we need any help or have any questions that are specific to web development or to web accessibility. All right, so the Discord link, I'm going to throw it in the chat just in case anybody wants it. Okay, so once you grab that, remember, introduce yourself, pick your role, and then all of the, um, the channels will come up. Uh, and I'm really proud. That thing took me like a couple hours today to configure that bot and make it work. At least that part works. So now um, everyone has to assign themselves a role and to introduce themselves because um, we had an influx of new members and I want to keep our community safe and for us to know who's in there. Um, and also it's nice to know like what you like, what your um, job description is and what you're doing professionally. Uh, Cause that also gives us context uh, when you ask a question or chat with us. And also I'm always looking for the web developers cause that's where me and Dorlin are kind of rusty where we need the most help. So it's always nice to know who the web devs are in there so I can ask questions. All right, uh, I'm gonna look at the chat, see what everyone's saying. Liz Ginger said, thanks, zero out of five stars for that medical experience. Oh yeah, that was a gnarly one. Cross contamination is wild. Um, Rob Dom said, I make mistakes every day. Great resources, so much info. What's up, Control Out Tree? Control Out Tree says, for some reason I didn't get my Twitch notification. Oh, I read all these, sorry. But yeah, we know now why there was no Twitch, Twitch notifications. It's because I made an uh-oh with the bot. Uh, Karina Merg, what's up, Karina? Karina said, hi everyone, glad we're back together. Uh, let's see, light mode. I don't know what Liz said light mode about, but if it was for me, I like everything in light mode and y'all know why, because I got astigmatism and let me not even get on my soapbox. You know, I feel like I repeat <laughs> myself, but the new people need to know, okay? If you have dark mode on your your um, your um website, make a light mode too, because not all of us do well with dark mode, okay? Liz said, Aria, remind me to share this awesome article about Aria. Yes, we we love that. Um, I'm gonna put this in the resource page now. So I'm actually currently taking a course. I'm taking a few courses uh, that include Aria. So I'm kind of just inhaling everything about Aria so that I can come back on and share what I've learned. Um, ben is a dev for Microsoft Learn. He's fun and awesome. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out. I appreciate it. The close her said, thank you for doing all the work with the Discord bot. My pleasure. It was actually a really fun, interesting experience because I've always wanted to kind of make one and I never had the time, but I, uh, I have some newly, <laughs> some new time that I will talk to y'all about. <laughs> um, Sinotech said, Africa, it goes without saying, if you need help with a Discord, let me know. Listen, I'm gonna shout you out later. I know you don't want me to, but I'm mm -hmm. gonna do it anyways. Sinotech is the best, y'all. <laughs> Liz Ginger said, thanks for all the work in organizing Africa. It is my pleasure. Um, Karina Merck said, could we share the project for a good roast for a future stream? 
Ooh, which project? Darn. That might have been high up and I don't remember what we're talking about. So Karina, if you can remember why, which project you're talking about, y'all know I love a good roast. So yes, the answer is yes. We will roast whoever you want us to roast. <laughs> right, let's and do it, it now. No. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm like, listen, today is, we're, today is a casual stream. We have no real agenda here. We can roast. I'm, I'm ready. My body's ready. My mind is ready. I'm with it. Um, uh, Robodom said, digging this new setup and new changes to the stream. Um, do you mean this visual setup cool. in my background or do you mean our new and awesome real life, uh, discord? You know, the funny thing about our group is it was really small and I would hand out the links to invites, like personally, like this person asked for it. So I gave it to them. Um, but I think I put the link somewhere like public without thinking about it. Um, and the, why I was happy it happened was because every time I join a discord for any other group, man, you know how many hoops you got to go through before you get to the main thing where you can get all the information. They make you do so much. They're like, first sign this thing for the rules, then assign your role, then introduce yourself, then look at this other thing and click this other thing. And I was just like, oh my gosh, how do they do that? First of all, that was what I wanted to know. Also, it's just a lot, but um, I see why they do it now. It, it makes sense. Um, <laughs> Control Alt Tree said, what courses are you taking? All right, y'all. <sighs> I'm going to take a breath and let Dorlin speak in like two seconds, but I'm very excited. <laughs> Dorlin's like, uh. <laughs> I'm very excited about these new courses I'm taking. And I've told Dorlin about it. Actually, I think I told you yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm taking this course by this woman named Liz, not Liz in our group, but um, her name is Liz and it's a UX UI design course all about accessibility. Um, I am getting it free through my job, but it's like $150 and I'm not getting paid to advertise for this woman. So I don't know if I'm going to put the link in there, but if you are super interested in paying $150 for whichever reason for a Udemy course, I would say this one is worth it. Um, I feel like I know a lot about accessibility and design and I learned some new things that were very helpful and I think would be helpful for a lot of people. So I'm taking that. I'm also taking, um, well, I just finished it. It was like a nine hour course, um, nine hours of just like content, not all the other stuff, but I'm also taking a course uh, about accessible web development. So it's about accessibility. It's a bunch of stuff I already know, but specifically it's going over Aria and Aria is something that I've only lightly touched on. I understand the basics and I understand the concept of it, but I don't really, I'm not an expert on it. You know, I'm still, me and Darlin are like, we get it, but like, we want to get it, get it. And that's part of what we're going to be doing um, on the stream as well. Um, <laughs> Sinotech said, don't do it with a, with a mad face. All right, fine. I won't shout you out then. Sheesh. Um, <laughs> The close her said, check out all of those lovely plants. Yeah. Yes, this is, I have a bunch of plants back here. Um, for anyone who can't see the screen, my background, we don't really do a lot of describing often, but we do have uh, some people who watch us um, who can't really visually see the screen. So if you're curious, my background has a bunch of plants, ferns, ZZ plants and potho plants and yeah, and a little couch back there. Oh, Karina said my own project. So this is the project you want us to roast? Okay, I want to have it roasted so I can squash all the bugs. I haven't shared it yet. Well, I shared it with you, Africa, when we had our coffee chat. Oh, okay, yes, Karina. I had a coffee chat with Karina and they showed me their projects. So if you want to put the link in the chat, if you want us to roast it today, let me know. If you want us to roast it another day, also let me know. Um, Sinotech said, dude, I'm excited to do the DHS accessibility course. All right. Y'all already know we are DHS baddies in this. Okay. So we're going to do a whole thing on DHS at some, actually, let me pull up my thing. So I don't forget to talk about DHS at the bottom of this. Uh, we're going to put this under life updates. 
updates on life. One of them is going to be DHS. Let's talk about it. Um, so Sinotech, for anyone who doesn't know, Sinotech's going to take the trusted tester course. And y'all know what I say about the trusted tester course. Anybody who takes that thing and gets it knows what they're talking about, at the very least. If they also know how to use a screen reader, that's my little caveat. You know, I got to I got to throw that in there because you can take this course without a screen reader. And that's wild because you cannot do this job without using a screen reader, period. I don't care what anyone says. You can come at me. I'm going to tell you again. <laughs> Not happening. Right, Dorlin? Right. Right. I'm there. OK. <sighs> that's a soapbox. Y'all don't want us to stand on because we're going to be on it for like 30 minutes. Um. Liz Ginger said, I'm excited to start the new section 50812. So yes, new section 508, me and Dorlin are actually trying to figure out how to roast it legally without getting in trouble. <laughs> we're, we're gonna figure it out. Um, Sino said, said, once I finish the course, I'm gonna flash that certificate around like it's my identity. Yeah, no, it's literally like <laughs> our personality is accessibility and that's fine, okay y'all. <laughs> Um, Liz said Udemy has frequent sales. You can get courses from 16 to $25 Canadian. That is true. Udemy constantly has, um, sale, like really good sales. Um, control Altry said, Oh, interesting. I always love to hear what others are learning and if it's worth it. Thanks for sharing. Yes. So, um, I think in the discord, I'll probably drop the links to what I'm learning. Um, so that you all are just aware of it. Um, I think it's worth it. And after spending nine hours with my girl Liz on her little course, that's my friend. I don't know her in real life, but I feel like I do. <laughs> and we're friends. So if I can give her some money, that's fine. <laughs> um, Tasman Wing. What's up, Tasman? Ta I think I'm ta Tamson. Tazseen? Tamseen. I'm sorry. I'm going to say Tam. Sorry I'm late. I'm Tamsin, a content designer and specialist in digital accessibility studying for the WAS exam. Joining you from New Zealand and so glad to see y'all again. New Zealand's in the building. Oh my gosh. We have so oh, many cool. people from so many different places. Um, I know Liz is in Canada. Sinnoh's in Canada. Sinnoh said, no screen reader? Yeah, Sinnoh. No screen reader. It's wild. You they, So for the DHS Trusted Tester, you can use something called Andy. What Andy does is it kind of scrapes the page and looks for certain things dealing with accessibility. It looks at like the HTML markup, the CSS positioning and things like that. Um, and it allows you to look for things that a screen reader would look for. So it looks at ARIA labels. It looks at all kinds of things that a screen reader will find. Um, which I guess they figured would be good because it's hard to teach someone how, I don't, you know, we could talk about the rationale, um, but at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's imperative to use a screen reader if you are gonna take this seriously because that's what we used to test manually. Yeah. Yep. All right, I'm gonna take a breath. Got anything to say, Dorlin? Mm. Um. I'm looking forward to talking about DHS trust tester and seeing how it changes because the new course is start is supposed to be released on April 1st. And anyone out there who's finishing up the previous course has until March 24th to do so, which is like three days away. So if it, there's anyone out there like struggling and suffering through those end days, I feel you and good luck. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think this is the last week. If you are currently in it, then this is the last week. And then they're going to do a new one and we're going to see whether or not it's any better pretty much. Yeah. It's going to be better. It has to be better. Yeah, even if it's like we always say, even if it's only 10% better, it's still better. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, Graham. Graham's here, y'all. What's up, Graham? Oh, hey. Uh Sinotech said April 1st. I don't I hope they don't have April Fools for us and delay it. 
I don't know, y'all. I have no clue what's going on with the DHS trusted tester. We're just going to see when it happens. And if you haven't already gotten it by now, just wait. Um, well, you can't sign up for it anymore um, until they release the new course. And for the longest time, they were saying like that the 5.0, I think, is the, the current one and 5.3 will be the new one. But for the longest time, they were saying 5.0 was going to be over at the end of last year. And um, then they finally came out with that actual date. So I don't know. It feels more real than before when they were just like at the end of the year. But we'll see. Hopefully yeah. no delays. Hopefully, yeah. I think they're probably ready to launch it. They just have to push the button. Wait for everybody to finish up the old one and take the week off and then they're starting the new one. Yeah, yeah. Graham said, hey, how are we all? What are we on today also? Uh, I just have to imagine that in a British voice for that for that sentence that makes sense grammatically. Mm -hmm. um, we okay today is a chill day today is not a official study group like topic day today is a welcome back we're back in the building after our long hiatus we're talking about what we're covering for the next couple months uh we're giving some updates on life and we're talking about what topics we're going to cover um to for the future and then we're going to do we're going to see if we're going to roast a website and then we might try some replit stuff to see how accessible replit versus code pen is, uh, because your girl Dorlin, uh, needs to use either one of those. So we'll see. I think that'll be really interesting. If it doesn't work out, I have no qualms using good old notepad. Yes. Yes. Notepad. You can also code on notepad. So that's always nice. <laughs> Um, all right, let me read some of these comments. Lemonade Zebra said, I actually just learned of the DHS course yesterday and made an account. I started the 508 course. Hmm. Which 508 course? Make sure you're doing the right one because you shouldn't have been able to sign up yesterday and start it. So send us a link and let's check that for you really quickly, Lemonade. Um, there are a couple of different courses that they do through DHS though. So that might be one of the other ones right. that isn't trusted tester. Okay. So if it's, a, if it, it, I'm pretty sure you can't do the trusted tester until they open it up again. Um, Liz said April 1st is my oldest cat's birthday. The kitten will be 17 years old. Oh my goodness. Oh, whoa. Uh, Sophie's Choice said two co two coworkers got word yesterday they passed the CPAC. Congratulations! That's, That's awesome. amazing. Uh, Liz said GitHub Code Spaces is accessible. Microsoft is strong on Alley. Uh oh, don't say that to Darlin. <laughs> they can be. They I guess they do try sometimes, but uh. That is a source of contention in our office. New Teams is better, though. New Teams yes. is better. Kind of. Uh, Lemonade said, yes, the tester one wasn't available. You're right. Which one are you taking then? Tell us about it. Uh, Graham said, well, if we are doing catch-ups, I'm a W3C invited expert, so I'm writing WCAG 3.0 with a group of talented people. So that is interesting. What? Graham, tell us more. That's, That's so, so cool. That is so cool. I want to be when I grow up, literally. Like, that is one of my goals. <laughs> I'm like, if ever I find more time, I would love to be a W3C invited expert and work on the WCAG that I look at every single day and have a lot of strong feelings about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Tam's wing, Tam's in said, can you remind me what's the topic we're studying together today? All right, everybody. So today there is no study group topic today we're just hanging out talking about what we're going over and then answering questions and we're going to do a little bit of accessibility testing we're going to use some of the tools that we're going to use together for the upcoming streams um, and see how accessible they are because remember dorlin has to use all the stuff that we're using as well and everyone else who's going to be joining us who may be using assistive technology so today is just a really chill fun stream uh, if you don't feel like chilling with us and having more free willing conversation, I totally get it. You can hang out with us um, starting on the first Thursday of next month. It's going to be, remember, the first Thursday and the third Thursday. 
And if we ever have like a chill stream where we're just not really talking about topics, we'll always let you know. Uh, we don't really do that that often, but today we just wanted to say, hey, we wanted to hang out with the fam and um, really just keep the conversation moving with what everyone else wants to talk about. We have a sh we have an outline we're following, but um, this one's a little bit more casual for those who don't mind that. Sino said, when I grow up, I want to be Graham. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Lemonade said, I just parked. I'll get the name of the class in a few. Oh, I forgot you were driving. Oh, no. Are you driving and texting? Stop it, Lemonade. I hope you're not driving. Um, let's see what else. I'm sure they were doing it safely when they were pulled over only. Yes. Um, Graham said, I mean, I could possibly see about getting you an invite to the group if you want to come along. Oh, uh, yes. The answer is yes, Graham, please. <laughs> Do it. Oh my goodness. Send it to me. <laughs> I just want the clout, okay? I just want to be like, hey guys, um, I'm a W3CP expert and I've been invited to work on the WCAG. And I told them about parsing. Oh man, parsing. I'm gonna miss parsing. I'm gonna miss my catch all be all defect. For those who don't know, is there anyone here who doesn't know what the WCAG is? Let's talk about that. You know I don't like acronyms without like explaining what the words mean but if you're here i kind of assume that you know know what that means and if you don't that's totally fine i think um, that's one of our prerequisites for the group is what it is it, but... right so we have although you are right best practices always to say the acronym out the first time it's used in any context yes the web content accessibility not access guidelines i know <laughs> um robo dom said sometimes it's fun to just hang out yeah i like it yeah. i'm a fan um so, wolven said it's help us get back cool. in the groove yeah sorry yeah. i cut you off i didn't no please cut i just keep please cut me off you know i will just go <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah we didn't want to just jump into the web accessibility stream we kind of wanted to ease into it and just say hey it's been a while. Um, and the thing that we noticed during our streams, which is why we kind of want to maybe every other month do one of these type of streams is when we get together, a lot of us have a lot of questions. We have a lot of random topics that we talk about. And then sometimes we want to impromptu roast websites or try things. And we never have time to do that during our streams because they're so content heavy. Um, and sometimes we have technical difficulties. So um, streams like this at least help us kind of just hang out and click on links, show stuff, um, and then talk about personally what we got going on, which we didn't even get to yet. Um, Liz put something in here. FYI, know one of the product and dev people for VS Code and GitHub, they really want feedback. Okay. So I'm going to copy and paste this into our resource, uh, our resource link. Google drive thing, whatever we're calling this. Um, and it's a link to a uh, visual studio for screen readers. So uh, my assumption, oh, that's two different ones. Okay. So I'm going to put a space in between this on our thing. Uh, I'm assuming that they want to know how it works with screen readers. And I don't think that you have VS code on your computer. Do you Doralyn? I actually might. Um, I had actually tried using VS code at one point when I was first learning to code and didn't find it accessible or usable. And maybe it was just cause I, you know, it might have been operator error at the time, but I might have it. I'm going to look real fast. Okay. I think um, that one might, I've heard good things about that though. Graham, I will drop you a DM. I haven't really been on Twitter. I'm slowly easing myself back into it though. Um, I'm sure you're like a Twitter king by now. <laughs> uh, Liz said, yep. Let's put in the WCAG acronyms. Uh <laughs> Graham said, we can all go, right? Uh, I, I guess. Uh, Lemonade said, ha, no, I only typed once I parked. Angel emoji. <laughs> although, See, I told you. I know. I know. Uh, they said, although there's always a voice to text, we all know with the winkies tongue out emoji. Um, Graham said, Microsoft doing the good old, let's get people with disabilities to tell us, to, to, to tell us what is wrong trick. 
Instagram. For free. For free. For free. For Let's free. get him to do the work and not pay him for it. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't you all aren't the time you proud and, like, and excited that you got to help out a big multi billion dollar corporation for the free? It's for the it's people. It's so messed up because, like, you ha- feel this moral obligation, you yes. know, to make the world a more accessible place for those who come behind you. And by giving your feedback, you're going to do that. But you're also perpetuating the cycle then where these corporations that have the money to pay people to actually do these jobs are going to rely on free work from disabled people who maybe could use that job you know Eh. anyway sorry no that's not anyway sorry that's a rant that we're (laughs) here for okay (laughs) yes like real talk um yeah uh i i i man i have a lot of feelings about this particularly because my instinct is always you all know me i'm always about that community taught stuff but that has nothing to do with it. To me, it's all, it's more like maybe not a moral obligation, but like, I'm just, I just want things to work. If I am a person who's using a screen reader or using any assistive technology, it's not really that I'm trying to help y'all out. It's I'm trying to help me out too. You know, I, I just want it to work. Um, and it should work <laughs> and I should get paid for my time helping you. Cause that is a whole job. You know, it's a job to test and, and do all those things. So I know that they have an accessibility team and this is not us dunking on Microsoft. This is just a industry wide person thing, you know, that just happens in general where mm-hmm. the people who are the most affected are the ones who have to do the work to make it, to fix it when it, it really shouldn't be that way. It is though. Fighting Lit- the good fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all good. Liz said, Dorlin, would you like to have a copy chat with a blind coder who uses VS Code? It's a learning curve for anyone. I think the answer is going to be yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yes, please. Um, Yes. All the yeses. Yes. (laughs) That's awesome. Thank you, Liz. That's really cool. So um, side note, one of, and this is one of those things, I think I've told this story on the stream already, but when I was first learning about uh, accessibility engineering. I took a bunch of courses. Um, and one of them was like a general accessibility course on Corsia, Coursera, however you say it. Coursera? Coursera. Um, and there was a guy on there, he was blind. And, you know, we had our disability etiquette training together already, a lot of us here, and me and Dorlin reference it all the time. But when my guy came on screen talking about I'm blind and I'm a web developer, I was just like, but how? You know, I, I know about screen readers, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I'm like, I, okay, but like, how do, how do you make a page if you can't see it? So I think about that a lot and that would be really cool. You gotta tell me all about that. Um, and if anyone's curious about that uh, or has any questions, please ask us, that's what we're here for. Um, That also reminds me of a conversation we had uh, yesterday about blind driving (laughs) and blind photographers. Very (laughs) cool. That was cool. One of our friends told us that he can drive if you tell him, (laughs) if you tell him where to go, you tell him what's in front of him. And I was just like, how, how? Where there's a will, there's a way. Um, and Dorland's going to teach me how to drive stick. So there's that. <laughs> I'm telling you, if we had a, a manual car right now, we need to get somewhere, just you and me, we could do it. With our powers you. combined. I honestly believe you at this point. I'm just like, all right. <laughs> I, have, I have no questions. You know, in one of our streams, we watched a clip from Sin of a Woman with Al Pacino in it with um, where he's like, the am I blind or you blind and I take your arm clip. But there's another clip in that movie of him driving a Ferrari and a sighted person sitting in the uh, passenger seat and telling him when to turn and stuff. And I mean, obviously it's Hollywood or whatever, but it's a pretty fun scene. (laughs) Who was telling us about the blind race car driver? That one I was like, no, you're lying to me. How? That I, 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 was, I honestly don't, I don't get it. When I was first, uh, when I first lost my sight, I was out in Oregon for a little bit. And I was going to the Oregon Commission for the Blind. 
And I went out to lunch with um, some guy who'd been blind, I don't know, of all his life, for, but for a long time and just like knew all these people and were just telling me all these great stories. And there was a race car driver in Oregon who was blind and was able to do it via like a, a headset and someone up in a tower and, you know, however they made it accessible, they made it happen. It was just definitely mind blowing at the time. And definitely for someone just losing their sight, who still was, had a lot of ableist attitudes baked in and was like, what can blind people do? It was really cool to hear that. And like, truly like where there's a will, there's a way. Disabled people are doing all sorts of things that you might not think they'd be doing, but they are and they can. Yeah. Graham said Brit over here laughing at Murka for being amazed at driving stick, LOL. Yeah, that's funny because ah! our friend who was telling us about that, he was like, where I'm from, uh, driving a, a, an automatic is a luxury. <laughs> like all cars come in in manual, period. But in America, it's like, if you know how to drive a stick, you are something else. You know, that's actually really cool. Uh, Lemonade, uh, <laughs> Lemonade couldn't have been texting us, I guess, because uh, they put another manual driver here, Dying Breed. Highly recommend everyone learn. Been driving sticks since I was 16. Wow, that's really cool. So fun. Uh, Liz said, funny blind driver story. My mom had a 25 year perfect driving record. Uh, when my mom turned in her driver's license, retinas tore again. The woman looked at her, looked at the computer screen, looked back at my mom with her white cane and said, are you sure you want to do this? My mom got the feeling that the driver, de the driver department person would rather have my blind mom drive than the sighted people who get tickets. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That just I held on to my last driver's license for a long, until it expired. I was just like. I've got a one get out of jail free card. I feel like <laughs> turned my license in. I never used it. it was responsible people. Good for you. All right, I'm gonna <laughs> read some more of these. Um, let's see. Ooh, first time in the chat, Ghibli Magic. Hey everyone, what's up Ghibli Magic? Um, ooh, gotta go all the way up here. All right, so Tamsin, sorry for taking so long to read these y'all. Um, sorry, another question. I'm just updating my calendar with a new date. Do our study sessions have an end date? E.g. up until which month this year? LOL. Um, so <laughs> the answer to that Great is... Great question. <laughs> <laughs> the answer to that is the way that I see this, this is, uh, me and Dorlin, the, the Dorlin in Africa show, the Dorlin in Africa with the alley baddies and everyone else who comes here show, um, Pretty much, this is a rolling accessibility study group. We will have specific topics in seasons, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, right now, we're in season two. Uh, and season two is going to run until we get through all the topics for the web accessibility uh, specialist body of knowledge. There are so many topics, and the topics are so heavy that we cannot give an end date we can only tell you to look at our list that we went over earlier and see all the weeks week by week. Assume that some of those will take more than one week and it will come up to at least, I don't know, another four months of content for this specific thing. Um, and then we're just going to go to another uh, another topic, which would probably be the DHS trusted tester because we have got our eye on that and we get so many questions on it. So we're just going to do a whole season on the DHS trusted tester next. Um, and in between when we're not doing that, it's just going to be a web accessibility study group stream where we talk about web accessibility topics, whether that's a specific topic or a random topic or just a roast session. Um, just assume that this is just like a thing that we're going to be doing indefinitely. However, if you want an estimate for how long it's going to get, how long it's going to be to get through it, if we're only doing two streams a month, oh, the four months was if we were doing it every week in my head. So just maybe or six like months. Weeks. That sounds like such a long time. Oh my goodness. I don't know if it's going to be six months. I don't know the math, unfortunately, but um, that's actually a very valid question. And I'm going to put it in the discord. I'm just going to like do some maths 
and give an estimate on that because I actually want to know myself. Uh, Dr. Tony Fast said, I love this so much. I don't know. I'm reading these kind of late, so I don't even know what I was talking about at that point, but I appreciate you, Dr. Tony. Uh, Liz Ginger said, it's a social thing. They do have disabled devs as testers and users, e.g. my friend Ben. Okay, cool. I assumed that Microsoft definitely does have a whole testing team with disabled people. I could only assume that. So like I said, I was not dunking on Microsoft specifically. Um, This is just a thing that's happening within our industry where we're giving up our time and expertise for people who can afford it. You know, I'm, I'm, I will help anyone for free period. I'll help anyone for free. Um, even a big corporation, <laughs> but like, I'll be salty about it. If you're a multi-million dollar corporation, Dr. Tony said, pay disabled people period. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Preach. Take my Miami right. accent out period. Okay. Y'all pay them. All right. Um, Graham said, OMG, why thank you, Microsoft, for allowing me to do things for you. Also, I'm angry as I applied to be an accessibility specialist at GitHub and they ghosted me. So perhaps I am bitter. Oh, Graham, I also did too. (laughs) I also applied for that job. Um, Yeah, I never heard from from them. Uh, I just assume that I'm not like famous enough or cool enough or like have enough experience to work for GitHub. GitHub. I don't know if y'all know the, know this. I feel like I've talked about it before and this is a defining moment for me right in this moment because this has changed for me and this has been my goal for like three years, which is wild. Now I do the maths, but GitHub was my number one like company that I wanted to work for that I was like trying to learn all I could so that I could work for GitHub and work on their accessibility team or in DevRel. And I was so gung-ho, like, this is my ultimate, like, please, I wanna work for GitHub. Um, But yeah, that's changed, life changes. Um, And now I just wanna do other things. I think GitHub's cool though. So I think that mostly has to do with me being very disillusioned by big companies who are just laying everyone off. It just feels like the wild west out there, no one's safe. Um, so that's, it's, it's a little bit of that and it's a little bit of just other things, but, um, from what I know about GitHub, GitHub is an awesome place to work for. Everyone I know who works for GitHub is obsessed. So I have nothing bad to say about them. I feel like they try pretty hard with accessibility as well. They're, we tested their, I think we tested GitHub and found that everything worked. It was just very confusing because there's so much content on the page. So maybe there's a way to do that better, but we could still use it. And that is 60% of the battle. Can I even use it? Does it work with assistive technology? Can I use it with a keyboard? So, hey. Um, Robo said, dunking on corporations is my favorite pastime activity. Same. Besties. (laughs) (laughs) Twins. Kathy Coe said, wish I could stay longer, but I need to go. Nice seeing everyone again. Oh, Kathy Coe. Kathy probably left like five minutes ago. I love Kathy. Kathy's one of our OGs. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Uh, Liz said, Dorlin, okay, I'll reach out to my Microsoft and GitHub connections hanging out there again soon doing an oh and Liz is also doing an alley talk at Microsoft I think next week or something like that um Very let's cool. see oh Sino, are you another stick driver Sino said driving stick is so fun uh Ghibli said you got this ultimate driving power unlocked y'all I don't know my partner has a stick shift car and that's the only reason I'm learning how to do it otherwise I would not I've always kind of wanted to learn how to drive, though, a stick. It's just, ugh. Anyway. Dude, you're going to feel so good when you know it. It's like the DA trusted tester of driving. (laughs) Okay. So, oh, Lemonade Zebra found the name of the course. Uh, There's a basic, what is Section 508 and why is it important? There's also authoring accessible documents through the DHS. I saw that the tester course wasn't available yet, so I started this one. It's a very basic but thorough intro to 508. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the basics. That's really awesome. 
Let's see what else. T Dr. Tony said, for blind coders, a friend of mine has been building some community for b blind coders. That is oh, oddly really? specific. I okay. want to be a I'm, part of that. <laughs> of course, I'm putting this in our um, resource list. Awesome. I'm gonna copy this and paste it in there. If you need that link again, anyone in the chat, just let me know and I'll put it in the chat again. Um, they just hosted a non-visual data science class that is available on YouTube. Okay, oh, and cool. I'm also gonna put this YouTube link in there. That's awesome. Um, which also reminds me, and I'm sure Dorland's sick of me talking about it, but I'm gonna talk about it again anyways, cause they don't know about it and I wanna tell everybody. But <laughs> there is this person I'm obsessed with on LinkedIn who's blind and he does video games and he's been playing Spider-Man and he showed how he plays Spider-Man. He's completely blind. Um, I don't remember which Spider-Man it is. This is the latest Spider-Man game, but the, all, the, the visual, the descriptions, audio descriptions of the cut scenes, chef's kiss. The way you <laughs> tell him what to press and explain what's happening as he presses them, chef's kiss. I'm just like, what the heck? It is so cool. I need to find the link and put it in here so y'all can watch it. Um, I didn't watch the whole thing. I think I watched like the first like 20 minutes. It was very relaxing to watch. Um, but he was on there for like an hour and a half, just playing it for that long. And he has a bunch of streams where he just streams him playing video games. And yeah, it's really cool. Uh, what else? Uh, Liz said, Africa, you missed this chat earlier, but thought I would retype it here because there's at least two of us here. EDS equals ether Danlos syndrome. Yeah. It's connective a genetic connective tissue disorder where zebras, oh, that's what it stands for. Okay, I'm gonna put this in and then Liz put a link here with everything. So I'm gonna put that in our little resource as well. Uh, Robosom said, but you're still doing great work despite not working for the bigger name companies. Oh, thank you. Uh, Liz said, yes, GitHub is awesome. Know some of their staff. Yeah, GitHub, I have no qualms with. Uh, Graham said, oh, 100% on all the layoff stuff. It has driven, driven me to build a business again as the tech hiring process and job security is so poor right now, it ends up being lower risk to start a business. Yes. You are not the no. only one doing that. Uh, I feel like a lot of us are more like, you know what? I need to protect myself and also invest in my own stuff so that I can actually, you know, have something to show for that time. Uh, Sino said, I am a stick driver. Yep, that's cool. Ghibli said, yeah, no worries. You're not alone. I'm also not a stick ship driver. It would be fun to learn one day. Yeah, I feel like it would have been fun like 10 years ago when I was a little younger and my brain was a little bit more plastic and I didn't live in DC where it's like so scary to drive and I don't drive anymore. I like sold my car because I live in the city and the metro works really well, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, DC is not the best place to learn or drive stick. Yeah. But you can do it, Africa. I'm going to try. All right. Do it. Uh, Liz said, Ali Tio has accessible gaming in their conference week in October, including blind gaming and making your own controllers. Bet. Please remind us of that because that sounds really awesome. Um, Ghibli said, well, that's amazing, especially for a game like Spider-Man. Oof, in DC. Yeah. Yeah. So before we move on, and talk about some more topics um, that we wanted to share with y'all. What I'm gonna do really quickly is try to see, no, I'm not gonna find that in time, but I'm gonna make a note in here to do that at the end so that we can make sure that we're covering all the topics we're supposed to talk about. Blind gaming. And I wanna give y'all his, his LinkedIn cause it's just cool. It's just cool. All right. Let's get this PowerPoint back up and uh, talk a little bit more about some of the things we wanted to talk about. Remember, if you have any questions, just put them in the chat and we'll read them. All right, so we went over our resources, we went over our schedule. 
you know where everything is. If you need the discord link, please let me know and we'll add you on the discord. Okay. So now, oh my gosh, Holda D is here y'all. What's up, Holda? Holda. Holda, one of our OGs. Holda said, hey, miss, hey y'all, missed the first part, but happy to be here. Yeah, we just went on a few rants about accessibility. <laughs> and, uh, it was it was a lot, but <laughs> it's an it's it was I think it was a pretty interesting conversation. Um everybody's blowing up. Hey, hold up, what's up? Uh That's okay. okay. So we're gonna talk about topics we would like to to cover. And this is going to be interactive because we want to hear from you. We want to know what you want us to talk about, what you want to learn, and what you would like us to cover as far as um, the web accessibility specialist streams that we're doing. So that's already kind of preset. We're following uh, an outline, but there's always room for us to add things based off of that outline. So I want you to just think about that. Um, but more in particular, if you have any questions or topics that are not on that outline that you are curious about. So just to give you a brief overview of some of these topics, um, we're going to be doing semantic HTML. Ooh, we love that yeah. one. Semantic <laughs> HTML. Why do we love that one, Dorlin? Because it makes everything accessible. Literally, <laughs> well, if man. you look, use it correctly, you got it. If if used correctly and semantically, HTML will natively give you everything, almost everything you need. Maybe you may need a little sprinkle of Aria in there, but uh, if you make a button a button, and you make a link a link, and you make a form a form, and you use like headings and titles and things like that, your page is probably gonna work. So we're really excited to dig into HTML. Um, I haven't done HTML in, in a while. I like know the basics. So I'm gonna be learning too, refreshing, uh, and we're gonna make a page together. We're gonna actually build our very own, very simple vanilla AF HTML page with nothing else, just HTML. Um, for those who want to add CSS and all that other stuff, feel free, you know, get as fancy as you want with this page, but we're just going to cover together that topic of how do you build a page from the top to the bottom with maybe a form field or two with the information you need that, a, that assistive technology can get through that someone with a disability cognitively, motorically motor issues or any of those things can actually use. Robodom said vanilla tastes great. Exactly. Some <laughs> say it's boring, but I say it's a classic. <laughs> Add what you want, but as long as the vanilla is good on the underneath, it's going to be banging. Just saying. All right. So we're really going to be honing in on learning how to build accessible elements. So all of those pieces that go on your page, how do we make them so that they're usable for everyone? All right, it looks like we might've lost Dorlin. Dorlin, are you still there? Yes, I am. Tank's knocking on the door, so I'm gonna go let him in. Oh, okay, no worries. <laughs> I didn't wanna interrupt. Oh, it's all good. Um, the other topic we wanted to cover uh, like we said earlier, was the Section 508 Trusted Tester. Uh, we want to talk a little bit more about it in a structured way. Um, that's something that we're figuring out how to sprinkle in. Uh, but like we said, I think we're just going to do an entire season. Season three is going to be Section 508 Trusted Tester. At this point, what I'm thinking is we're probably just going to do each season on a certification that we're working on or have worked on, um, just the major p players, which for us, and tell me if I'm wrong, put it in the chat if you think we're missing one. I think it's gonna be the CPAC, the WAS, and the Section 508 Trusted Tester. If you have those three things, um, generally, you're kinda good to go. Uh, I can't really think of any other topics 
or certification specifically, I should say, where you will get a robust, where it, where it will be worth you doing and you'll get a robust learning experience. So I open the floor to everyone. Um, I was just talking, Dorlin, about uh, how we want to do more topics on five, Section 508 and how uh, I think how we're structuring our seasons so far for the first three is covering the certifications that you need to become an accessibility specialist, a good one specifically. And I think the CPAC, the WAS, and the DHS Trusted Tester are the main three. Uh, I'm going to have everyone in the chat tell me if there are more that we're not thinking about that are as robust and worth getting. Um, but I think those are the main ones that you really just want to have them. And the reason we're doing the study group in this way is because like I always say, when I was looking for resources, did I find any that were helpful a little bit, but did I find any that were in depth and with a person actually telling me like, you know, walking me through how to do something or talking about it. No, they, it just doesn't exist for these specific topics. So that's why we wanted to, to do this together. So like I said, what will you like to see? While um, you all think about that, I'm going to read some of these, um, some of these comments so that everyone knows what's happening in the chat. Uh, Liz said, my mom learned on stick. It was the 1970s. Your, my father installed the backup batteries in Bruce nuclear power station. Both he and the 18 wheel truck driver were exhausted. So the truck driver asked my mom if she could drive stick. She drove the big truck into the nuclear power plant with the security papers. Uh, let's see what else. There's some need to know learning for you. For real. Liz said, us go on alley rants? Never. LOL. Yeah. Uh, Graham said, a lot. I mean, I can start the real accessibility rants if you want. Like the fact that I can't embolden text in Twitch, so I have to use all caps, which sucks for Ali. See, I can start a rant on anything. Oh, yeah. Wait. If anybody wants to know who the roast rant king is, it's probably Graham, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all don't know, <laughs> Graham. Graham is like an OG. Graham, please come on the stream for one of these topics and rant with us. Uh, the the uh, original roast king, probably, I'd say. Uh, everything just sounds more dry in a, in a British accent. And <laughs> <laughs> it's really like, man, when Graham goes in. <laughs> um, Maiden Hair said, yay, I'm looking forward to hearing about semantic HTML. Uh, Liz said, personal alley goal equal alley forms with error handling. Oh, okay. And then you put in the, you put in the link, the link. So Rachel DeTulio, another OG, the utmost respect for this person I have. Um, they did a talk on accessible forms and this was how I sing single handedly learned about how to make accessible forms and the first time I actually understood what was happening under the hood and making them accessible. So I always bring Rachel up because they also have a template that has everything you need for it to do uh, an accessibility audit on it and it's accessible. So yeah, um, I'm gonna put this in our little page over here. Okay, and you know, I'm gonna just throw it out there just in case anybody's feeling generous. Um, this page, see how, I don't know who did this, but God bless them. Uh, these were all links and someone went in here and made the links into words that take you to the link. If anybody has it in their heart to do that for us again, um, please help us. I am so, <laughs> I got too much going on. It's just one extra thing, but I'll do it. It'll just probably take me like two weeks if I have to do it. Um, but I will do it eventually. Um, but if anyone wants to volunteer who has the extra time to just quickly go in here and do that, we would appreciate you forever. Um, let's see. All right. Ghibli magic said, this might be a baby question. No such thing. 
But I remember something about being able to test the code in an actual screen reader. Is there a specific screen reader you'd recommend, especially a decent free or cheap one? Cause I'm living the broke, getting a job dev life. I heard that and feel it. Okay. Let me make sure I understand the question first. This is probably a question for Dorlin. Um, something about being able to test the code in an actual screen reader. Do you mean test a web page? That's what it sounded like to me, test, you know, use a screen reader to test the page after doing the code. Yeah. What would um, you say? Probably NVDA, right? Well, I mean, I think it's worth it to download JAWS because they have the free 40 minute demo mode um, because JAWS is used so much, especially in the US um, and in professional settings. So you wanna know that your product is working with JAWS. Um, but after 40 minutes, it won't work again until you reset your computer. So, you know, you need to like be very, um, mindful of the time you're using with it, you know, flip it on, do your testing quick, but there's that free option. It's like $90 a year to have, um, to have a, like a home license of JAWS that you can update each year to their current, um, version. But then if you want something that you can run without time restraints, like Africa said, NVDA, that's the one you want to go with. It's open source. It's free. It's very robust. Most times um, the good JAWS um, functions will end up getting incorporated into NVDA at some point as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then if you're using a Mac, you already have a free screen reader built in. Um, the voiceover and you can turn that on by hitting command plus the F5. And then it'll go through a little tutorial and you've got a free one built into windows already downloaded. If you just kind of want to hear something, although I wouldn't do your testing with windows narrator, but it's something you already have on a windows machine and you can just toggle it on by doing um, control windows enter. And, and so if that's you what are you got. If you're curious about screen readers and how to use one, um, we, our last stream, our last stream, remember our last Isn't stream? Isn't that our last one? That was so our long ago. Was literally on how to test using a screen reader and it was awesome. We did a little bit of voiceover and then I totally failed and crashed and burned um, cause I can't remember how to use it anymore. Uh, we did JAWS and did we do NVDA? I can't remember. I think we might have flipped NVDA on. I think we did um, for a second. Um, but if you yeah. want to watch Dorlin go through that, um, testing a real page, uh, we did that last stream and it's on YouTube. It's week three. Week three. It's the last one that's up there for um, the WAS study group. So that's there if you're curious. Um, otherwise, the main thing about screen readers to remember is it feels hard at first. It's, it does have that learning curve to it, right? Where it feels a little freaky, a little funky, a little strange to use. Um, but it's really just about turning it on and just using it and trying. Um, and then it becomes second nature. Um, so yeah, just play around with it. If you, like I said, you want to do accessibility, turn a screen reader on. Um, especially because it's not just about, like we talk about screen readers a lot. Um, and if you've been on the screen, you've already, you know my spiel, but the really quick one is that while they're primarily for people without sight, they're also for people. And I hate saying without sight and that's because I keep hearing it. And um, <laughs> one of those words, don't say without sight. No, um, if someone, is blind or has low vision they may be using a screen reader but other people use them as well so not only that um but also using a screen reader as a tester gives you a lot of information that you will get without having to look at the code base because if something's not labeled correctly the screen reader is not going to read it if something's not something correctly it's going to be caught by the screen reader because um, a screen reader is just reading it's just parsing through HTML and then creating an accessibility tree and then reading from that. And we talked all about that in that last stream. And if that those words mean nothing to you, 
I would suggest watching that stream um, for the people who are serious about learning. If you're not, it might be kind of boring. I don't know. Um, so yeah. Uh, Ghibli, what platform are you on? Windows, yeah, Gib. NVDA, open source. So Liz said yep. NVDA. Um, Graham, I guess, was trying to figure out where, yep. So Ghibli is on Windows, Firefox. And Graham said NVDA is the best free option for Windows. Uh, and then Liz, Liz is our link queen, if anyone was curious. Um, Liz put in NV, NVA access. And I hope I'm, I don't, I don't, I just assumed qu uh, queen. I don't know if I'm using pronouns correctly there. So please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Ghibli said, sweet, thank you, Graham. Appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Graham said, I will wear the crown of rant slash roast king gladly. And I had my name down to come on stream with you both for ages. Just let me know when. Oh, yes. Yes. Graham, I'm going to reach out to you specifically. We need you on. We need you on. Also, hold up. I see you in here. We need you on too. Okay. Come hey. back. The synergy yeah. when you were on was just like my favorite. Also, Jamil. Jamil. You too. Um, Holda D said, so true Africa, I'm creating my own little document slash Excel slash presentation while studying for section 508 trusted tester. It's a lot of reading, so it helps me to break it down in my own visualizations. Uh, Holda said, yay, Rachel, I love your template. Yes, Rachel's template, ugh, man, Rachel, y'all don't under... <laughs> Y'all don't understand how amazing it is to have that resource that they put on their page with that audit thing. Cause that you can, that's a whole bag right there, but I'm not gonna get into it. I don't want everyone to know about it actually. I'm gonna keep, gatekeep it. I'm just kidding. Um, let's see. I don't know if Cinotech was talking about my link page, but they said I can get to that. And if you're talking about my link page, I could cry. Uh. <laughs> send link i'll hyperlink it oh my gosh y'all all right here's the link i'm gonna throw it in there right now for anyone who doesn't have the link for our resource page just gonna throw it in there that is literally so nice uh Robodom said, that's so awesome. Mad props to whoever added those links. Yeah. The craziest part was just going in there and being like, what the heck? Someone did this on their free time and didn't even like tell me. Um, all right, let's see. Liz said, this week's Web Accessibility Wednesday was accessibility testing tools for developers. So yes, Liz does a LinkedIn series called Web Accessibility Wednesdays. Very cool stuff. Um, they put in just random stuff about web accessibility, usually with a lot of helpful links. So I'm gonna also put that in our in our resource page. Um, Liz is also the one who did our web accessibility page, uh, web page, which we haven't looked at in a while. Um, Ghibli said, a hacky method works for me. Between the NVDA, it should be good. $40 a year is, isn't too bad for JAWS. Mm, 90. Yes, 90. 90. Um, the, Graham said, okay, mind blown. Never knew JAWS had a 40 minute mode. All that wasted money on licensing. Could have been logged out and logged in again if needed more than 40 minutes testing in a day. Okay, no. So Graham. Absolutely. <laughs> I would just say though, if, you, if you're like us and you're actually really testing for real, 40 minute mode. <laughs> You have to restart your whole computer actually to use yeah, you it do. again. You don't just log in and out because I would have I'll be like, yay, Jaws. But you and sometimes you accidentally will restart your whole computer when you're in the middle of something because it pops up something to tell you that you need to restart your computer. And if you hit OK or enter, it restarts it. <laughs> so I'm just warning y'all. And 40 minutes, it does go fast on it. And they give you like a this is going to be over in six minutes warning. And this is going to be over in three minutes warning, you know? And so it's like, uh, it could be a little obnoxious, but I mean, it's there, it's free. And if you've got, if you've done all your testing within VDA and you kind of know where your bugs are, 
opening up jaws and running through those again and making sure you've got that same behavior between the two screen readers. I think that's valuable. That is valid. I actually did not think about that. That's a that's a life hack right there for accessibility people um, using uh, unless you're on Mac. That's a whole nother story. But Mac is in its own little contained world. So voiceover is good enough for us um, because everyone, you know, anyone who's using a Mac will be using voiceover. So we're not that mad at it. But if you use a free one like NVDA, you could just use it as your main one because so many people use NVDA anyways. The thing about NVDA versus JAWS is JAWS is more like legacy users. People who are like really getting work done, like who have probably been um, visually impaired or blind for a while, um, that's gonna be their their main screen reader, my, is my assumption and understanding, uh, because it's so robust. NVDA is a little bit more casual. I wouldn't say more casual, that's not a right word for it. It's more like, it Tell, I think you probably better explain it. You know, I think it is. It's a very robust screen reader. And like I said earlier, a lot of the things that people like about JAWS end up getting incorporated into NVDA just as since it's open source, you know. And so you could do a lot with NVDA. Um, I think the problem we run into if you're only testing with NVDA is that you do have a lot of people using JAWS, especially you know, the government uses JAWS for, um, so anyone that's working for the government using that. And then you have just so many people out there who do use JAWS. When I lost my sight, I had a case opened with vocational rehab and they paid for me to get JAWS and learn JAWS. And so I know there's a lot of folks that are losing their sight in the U S who are on that same path and are going to be using JAWS. Um, but I think if, you know, you can't stand 40 minute mode, NVDA is going to, it's going to do it for you. You're going to be able to test and find all your elements, you know, with it. But, you know, it, it's, I don't know, JAWS is just so ubiquitous in, at least in the U.S. I think outside of the U.S., NVDA is more commonly used, though. I can't, right. I don't know the actual numbers on that, but it, we test with both, you know, with the, at our job. But well, primarily JAWS. We do, yeah. I think uh, most most jobs, if you're like in accessibility and you're a tester, um, you're, you're 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 probably using JAWS. Um, Doctor Tony Fest, Fast actually put a link in here. They said NVDA took a bunch of JAWS market share in the news WA, WAI screen reader survey. So there's a there's a survey right here. You know what they do? I'm clicking they do on the this one. We're they do that it. survey every, if it's the same survey i'm thinking of they do one and we've talked about it in this group before actually they do one every year where they pull i think is it Amer it's one of the the big groups does it and pulls everybody to kind of get an idea for how they're using screen readers and which ones they're using so it's good data all right thank so you I dr have, tony i have it up now wow what a Okay, so on my screen is, uh, first of all, somebody in chat tell me what's, what's wrong. What's wrong with this right now? Someone tell me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to describe what's on the screen. It's a pie chart, right? With one, two, yeah. three, four, five, six, seven uh, slices with the name. They're color coded. So blue is North America. What's the problem? Don't Sensory say Sensory characteristic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you know, we out here just auditing every day. Um, <laughs> and the first thing we see on the web aim website the web a okay maybe there, maybe i'm looking at this wrong is there and another way that there those, has to be uh, there has to be um does areas this count? are marked are there okay, lines yes, coming off okay, of them, i'm kidding y'all just kidding okay. okay let's just say if this was the only thing here though we would roast them but we're not going to roast them because i i had i'm like not my web aim <laughs> right. okay oh so goodness. no misinformation y'all 
if this was the way it is currently, yes, it would be sensory characteristic. Um, Holda said one poor color contrast, two color as only means of conveying info. Um, the close her said we have a visual aid using colors to illustrate information. Liz said use of color only. Okay, but when we scroll down, also you can hover over it and it'll tell you which one it is. So oh, snaps. I need to click on this link and see how that's reading for me. Um, you know, can but you that's put that link so in it? Oh. They also have a table with uh, the region, the number of correspond respondents, and the percentage. So oh, okay. they have it multiple ways. Multiple cool. ways of getting the information, and we love that. This is the perfect way to do it. You can do it this way visually. You can... Uh, if you're a mouse user, you can uh, hover over it. And if you are a keyboard user, you can just go through the tables. And we're assuming that this is a table, right? And it is, look, it's a table. So I'm using the inspect tool, AKA Dorland's favorite tool. I don't use inspect, nah, -uh. I open the other one, the just oh, the, the, view, the straight up view source. Yeah. So if you right click, I wonder how accessible this is. It probably is pretty accessible, I can only assume. But when you right click, I think you... it's one of those things where I just like need to learn the commands. But yeah. that's why I just go to the source code and read through it line by line because I'm a nerd. So this is probably way too small for everyone to see. But um, if you pr if you right click and you go to inspect, which everyone here who's a developer knows by heart, um, you can inspect elements and this is the table element which is good so one of the things that you'll learn is when you have a table element you can have a a, a table that's like a just a i'm having a brain fart but like it's a display table what's the word i'm looking for a layout table yes a layout table and all a layout table is is visually it's a table but it doesn't have any data in it really it's just like for visual sake they put it in a table um but this is an actual table and it has headers um it looks like in columns so this is very accessible we love that i'm gonna exit out here but it says in north america how many what's the demographics 42% of people are using a screen reader. Is that what they're saying for this? Is this North America, you said? For North America, what is this? 717 with 47.2%. Mm -hmm. Are you on the I page? That's one of, I am, but it, what am I? Oh, pie chart showing respondent regions graphic. Interesting. I think you gotta, hmm. we're gonna scroll down and maybe they'll have the different, oh, here it is. So JAWS has 40% of the market share and NVDA has 37.7. So they're, wow, that's, I'm actually surprised. They're basically was, almost the same, right? That kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then this over. is. Well, I think the more things you test with, the better. But if you're just doing with one, you can still get away with it. You're going to get the same general information from any of them. Mm -hmm. In general, um, if things are being read were correctly. used for layout and design before CSS existed. Yeah. OG HTML tables to put everything. <laughs> if Brandy was on here, she'd be like, I still use tables. <laughs> That's how we like learned how to make our web pages when we were learning. Like, well, just throw it in a table. Now we know better though, which is nice. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get back to our little list of things. It's not looking like we're gonna get to do Replit, but we're gonna do that on a different day. Um, we might end up just doing it on our HTML day. Uh, we'll see. I think we might have enough time for that, but what we're gonna we're gonna figure it out. So let me scroll up and read some of these. Um, we didn't even get to updates on life. Oh my goodness. Um, you know, it's already 547. We're almost I know, at two hours. I thought this was going to be like, we were only going to talk for 30 minutes. And then, 
We uh, never talk for 30 minutes. Lord Jesus. Like, um, all right. So what do we have left? Life updates. Yeah. And what we have a lot there? of um, comments to read through, too. So I'm going to. Okay. I'm just looking for comments right now that are things that were about what we we're just talking about, just in case. Um, Liz said, want to hear Maybe life we'll... updates? Yeah, we're going to do it. Uh, oh, Sino said, I just learned that 37% of people in my province identify as living with a disability. That's a large number. Um, Dr. Tony said, there is so much work to do in accessibility inaccessible data visual visualization but we just saw how you do it right um, which is nice um all right anything else blah, blah 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 all right we'll go back we'll go back up to that all right let's talk about let's get back on topic it's hard for us but we do our best <laughs> all right up we're through the comments all right life there we go yeah, we'll read through the comments more towards the end. Um, I think we went through a lot of them, though. Um, updates on life. Okay, y'all. Guess who is a new trusted tester? Wait, guess. Just guess. Anybody have any guesses? Darling! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, I get it, guys. Trust and tester, not me. Uh, but hold the decodes. You're correct. Dorlin is a trusted tester. Dorlin is a trusted tester, y'all. And y'all know that that's a big, a big deal. It is such a big deal, y'all. Like, oh my gosh. Tell us about it, Dorlin. Oh my gosh. I feel like it was legitimately one of the hardest things I've done. Like in terms of going through a test, it's very intense. Um, but as of February 27th, I am a DHS trusted tester. I started back in, I think it was like July 26th. So it was almost exactly uh, seven months. Yeah, um, that it took me to go through it. But I was kind of doing it on the side. I didn't do, like jump in and do it all at once um, and got through like the knowledge you read through and then the incremental exams you go through where you test each little thing on its own. And then um, finally started the practice test, I think last like December um, when we were still going through and doing CPAC stuff and um, got distracted, but they announced that you had till March 24th to finish up if you were enrolled or you lost all your um, progress up to that point. So the fire was lit and got back into it and um it was intense i wouldn't have been able to do it at africa um it unfortunately the trusted tester exam if you are blind individual you cannot do it on your own without sighted help just i mean the nature of some tests are visual you know looking at colors and certain other things like especially checking captioning to making sure it's matching audio descriptions some things like that so i'd go through and do all the criteria that i could do and then um screen share with africa and have to ask her all these specific questions like okay is this a heading okay like i'm gonna start tabbing through and like is this the focus order and just going through everything and <sighs> after some tears and probably blood and sweat too we got there and so yay thanks to africa and thanks to all of you for pausing while we put our efforts into that and um for all your support and again good luck to everyone who's out there still getting it three days left you can do yeah. it yeah that was a that was a unreal bonding experience that <laughs> we went through uh i don't think there was any way we could have done the stream uh well and also done the trusted tester it was really stressful um just because of the nature of it and the way that the test is structured. Um, and that's why we really want to do a whole stream series on it. Um, Cause I want everyone here. I think everyone here should, should take the test cause it's free. And because the knowledge is just so good. Like you'll, you know, once you, once you take mm -hmm. it, you don't have any more questions. You just have more questions on like, like even deeper topics really. Um, all the basics, though, you'll have them um, and be able to speak pretty confidently. So shout out to uh, Sinotech 
for getting started on that. They're going to be working on that for the next, when it opens up for the next couple months, um, which is really exciting. So do it. yeah, all the hard work did pay off Robo. Thanks for that. Um, I don't know. We're mm -hmm. really excited. It did. Oh my God. I was, it felt like very far away at the end there. Like it's not going to happen. And then it did. So it was beautiful. Mm. It is very stressful though. The way they structure it after you practice, pass the practice exam, which you have three attempts to pass. And if you don't pass, you can restart the practice exam again and have three more attempts. You know, each time you do it, they eliminate the criteria you got correctly. So it gets a little easier each test. And then the final exam, you have to do the same, pass it within three attempts. Um, but like after you pass the practice exam, you have to request the test, which can take up to three days to get to you, then you have 10 days to access that test. And then once you start the test, you have 72 hours to finish those three attempts. And so it's just like, I don't know, we definitely couldn't have done the stream. It was so intense. And I'm so glad it's over. Yeah, I cried during it. <laughs> <laughs> during mine, <laughs> like during Dorland's like, I was so, so invested, y'all. I was just like, I, it's me. I'm taking this test. <laughs> I'm like, all I'm doing is explaining everything. And I'm just like, ah. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't have done it without untrained eyes, I don't think. I mean, I could have sat there and tried painstakingly to explain everything to someone who wasn't already a trusted tester or someone who didn't know accessibility. I mean, early on, I actually tried explaining one of the web pages to uh, my mom, like, or having her explain it to me rather like on the incrementals and was just like, oh, this is, this is not going to work. But mm -hmm. <laughs> like having that, those trained eyes were so important. It would have been really hard, maybe impossible without that. Not impossible, but very, very, very hard. And mm -hmm. I learned some good tricks. So we're looking forward to like helping get those tricks out there, like for people who do use screen readers to get around. And um, I really felt like I learned some accessibility gymnastics getting through the trusted tester. And I'm looking forward to passing those along to anyone out there who's blind or visually impaired and is looking to do trusted tester. Yeah, so something we should have probably mentioned earlier, because um, we probably lost a few people um, on the stream, because we're, we're like, how many hours in now? Oh my gosh, we're like almost three hours. How the hell no, two. Two hours in already. Um, but what me and Dorland would like to do, um, especially for anybody who's super serious or has a disability that may be impacting like their ability to get through any of these tests is, you know, we would love to help out, offer resources. Um, and you can always reach out to us, especially if you're in the discord group, just send me a DM or whatever. Um, we're, we're happy to do coffee chats and help you out in any way we can. So, um, I'll be opening up coffee chats again. I took a little break on doing them, but I spoke with so many people, so many cool, awesome people and learned so much. Um, but what I really want to do this time around is make, uh, make sure that Dorland's available, uh, as a yeah. resource, um, for anybody who Get me set up mm -hmm. for some coffee chats. So we're going to set Dorland up, uh, with a calendar, uh, so that people can schedule those coffee chats with her. But yeah, yep. Um, Dolan's a trusted tester. We wanted to share that. We're very excited um, that she's part of the crew of people, the select few, <laughs> probably yes. like one in five blind people who have the DH. We, we want to know the statistics. We're so curious, like how many people actually got through this? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. It's just very curious. I would love to know. Right. But exciting to share it and was looking forward to sharing it with you all. So, yay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Liz said, so awesome, Dorlin. Robo said, coffee chats with Africa are so helpful. Highly, highly having, maybe highly recommend having a chat with her. Thank you, Robo. It was really nice talking to you, actually. Um, Liz said, someone needs to interview you, Dorlin, and write an article. Real talk, period. Um, <laughs> Holda gave us a bunch of hearts. Uh, um, Ghibli said, reading a Reddit thread about people taking it and stressing out and few, that test sounds like literal hell. Extra, yeah. extra kudos for passing it. Listen, y'all look at me, look at my face. Okay. I truly believe that I might be a genius. I don't know. 
I do. But that okay, test, so. I went to grad school, okay, for like medicine and it was, it was hard. And now that test <laughs> felt as, it wasn't as hard as my boards, but like, <sighs> I cried just the same, okay? I spent It'll the hurt your soul a little bit <laughs> studying for it. <laughs> it was, it, there was more, it was hard, it was harder. It was harder. It was. Mm. It had more questions, maybe the same amount of questions, but geez, man, I don't know. I think I'm just traumatized. I have PTSD, so I'm being dramatic, but yeah, totally worth it. Um, mm -hmm, it is. In retrospect, like after I got done with it, it was it was worth all of the stress, worth it all, like going through it. I'm happy to have it and like recognize how it is very doable. It didn't seem like it before I got it, but it's like you you can. You just got to put that work in. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. All right. So more updates on life. Oh, man. Let's talk about endings and new beginnings and learning new things. So, um, yeah, I me, you, you all know me and Dorland work together. We're work besties and real life besties. But we met at work. And we're partners, we audit together, we laugh and cry together, as you all see. <laughs> um, and yesterday was actually my last day um, working with Dorlin, um, very bittersweet. And that job was so amazing. Um, I really just wanted to talk about career switching, having a job you actually love, what that's like, you know what I mean? And then moving on to just learning new things. Um, I don't know. I'm going to talk about it more when I ha have processed it a little bit more. Um, but it, <laughs> it was really cool to have a job that I didn't want to like off myself every day to go to. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it is so special, especially for people who are sitting with us who are learning about accessibility because they want to get into the career or just learning about it in general. Um, I can really say like, this is such a great career and really it was my first time. Not my first time doing a job that I really enjoyed because I loved being an occupational therapist. Um, it's just the industry just is toxic you know that's a, a healthcare thing not a ot thing but um leaving was really bittersweet um and i i really feel grateful to have met dorlin through this whole thing and to like be so happy that we get to hang out outside of work and do this stream together um yeah so um i got a new opportunity um i'll probably talk about it a little bit more on the stream, the next stream or the stream after that. Um, I don't want to say too much while I'm still getting my feet wet, but right now I'm in a transition phase. I'm learning new things. Um, I'm doing more of like accessibility design, a lot of like UX, UI design and working with developers. So I think that'll be um, a really good opportunity. And another thing that I'm working on um, is probably doing a few courses um, and doing like some 508 trainings and just putting some things together. So we'll talk about that more um, as we move on, but I just wanted to share that. Uh, I'm no longer working with uh, Dorlin anymore as an auditor. Uh, auditing was like really how I got my feet wet in this field, um, specifically with accessibility in this way. Um, and now I'm gonna be kind of switching gears a little bit and doing something a little bit different, but still within accessibility and learning more. So um, I'm pretty excited. And uh, it's gonna be a crazy journey because I don't know what's gonna happen after this. Um, things could change as they always do. And I'm just like excited for whatever that change may be. So just keep following me on the journey. Me and Dorlin are, <laughs> we're going places, I guess. We're <laughs> going places and doing things. And we're, I think, I think this stream is so fun because it feels like everyone, we're really invested in each other's journey and like, you know, I want to keep y'all along for the ride. So we already talked about DHS. Um, I added blind gaming on here, but we're going to save that for another time because I want to talk about blind gaming a lot. <laughs> That's going to be its own thing for another time. 
So let's get, let's read a few of these before I move on. Um, Liz said, ooh, UI, UX, Ally equals awesome. Congrats. Thank you. Robo said, congrats. Wishing you all the best on your new career path. Holda said, that's so awesome, Africa. Very happy for your new beginning. Liz said, I hear you all not wanting to off myself every day after my last year in education. Human services equals burnt out. Oh yeah, it's so nice to look at the screen and not talk to anyone or have to deal with like a patient or a family. I don't know, it's just, it's nice to know that I'm still making a difference, but like I don't have to leave my house. I can like <laughs> make a difference solo or with a partner who also is enjoying the thing that they like um let's see what else <laughs> ghibli said both of you skipping off in the sunset together of course oh i love yes. that <laughs> liz said we need t-shirts yes we do holda said ally forever made it said that sounds awesome congratulations africa um okay let's get into shout outs yes shout outs all right, I don't know if these people are still here, but we're gonna shout them out anyways. Sinotech, my bashful person. Sinotech, just shout out. I'm not gonna say for why, but uh, I'll just say, Sinotech is really helping making this group run smoothly. And I am so grateful for that. Um, so grateful. Shout out to, Oh no, my shout out list, I forgot to write it. So I might forget some names. Um, shout out to Liz for always bringing the resources and for her Wednesday web accessibility posts. They're awesome. Shout out to RoboDom. Shout out to RoboDom for keeping the chat alive. <laughs> for Greatness being so positive. In the mornings. Yes for like always greeting people and making people feel welcome in the chat. Thank you. Shout out to Holda. Holda just be bringing the vibes y'all. Holda's, Holda's a vibe. Yeah. We want her back on the stream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rose said again, thank you for validating my messages. Sino text said, oh. what a vibe. We miss mm -hmm. y'all. Sino and Holda. Oh, and also Robo, Robo. Can you come on the stream? Can you bring those vibes with us? <laughs> what if we all just like we're on the stream at the same time? We're gonna figure it out. We're gonna have a <laughs> we're gonna have a party. <laughs> um, who else should I shout out? Those were the ones off the top of my head, but shout out to everyone who comes every week and hangs out with us for like two or three hours. That is something, you know? All of my uh, my peeps who are in the chat, in this specific chat, keeping the chat alive and keeping it interactive. Shout outs to you, for real. And shout outs to everyone who doesn't keep the, you know, who doesn't chat, cause that's valid too. Cause I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. When I watch other people's streams, I do not participate in the chat um, at all. Uh, I'm a lurker in life, so I get it. Shout out to you for being here or for listening, because really this is, making the world a better place, I hope. I hope that one person at a time, we're going forth and we're making the web a better place. All right. Replit versus CodePen, probably not happening today. But we're gonna, yeah. I think we're gonna do that. Um, we might just do that for the HTML stream. We're gonna spend 20 to 30 minutes just opening Replit and making it happen. Ghibli said, glorious cat shout out pick 10 out of 10, especially with that stylish yellow scarf. I don't know what that is about, but, oh, maybe there's a cat. I photo. mean, our accessibility cats do need to be shouted out. Alley cats. Alley cats, yeah. And Tank. <laughs> I, I saw Tank for like two seconds back there. Oh yeah, he's like, he's chilling. He's, huh? he loves our streams. He says they're great nap time. All right, so we have pretty much finished. Um, it's about six o'clock here, we've done two hours. So now we're at our end area where we just open up the floor for questions, comments, concerns, suggestions. And then I'm just gonna be reading um, some of the comments in the chat that I didn't get to. Let me just go through them. There wasn't Perfect. that much that we didn't say, I don't think. 
And then um, Dorland, the floor is yours if you want to say anything as well, obviously. Hmm. I like we've gotten through so much today. I'm probably going to spend a little bit of time, check out Code Pen and Replit between now and our next stream, just so we won't be doing it live and have bugs and stuff, hopefully, just kind of be kinda able to show what it. we know. Yeah. I'm pretty curious, like, which one's going to win? Like, who's going to be more accessible? That's, that's my too. curiosity. I'm also looking forward to um, the, you know, potential chat with um, who Liz brought up about VS Code. That would be super cool. Yeah, that would be amazing. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, every all the coding I've done thus far has been through Notepad, and it has served me very well. So I'm not worried if these don't work out. But it's going to be cool to test them and and see how well they work with uh, Jaws right. and the keyboard. Ghibli said, and these are a little older, so we'll know what they're talking about based off of context. But Ghibli said, "Ooh, I'll definitely have to hunt down that old stream, probably the stream about screen readers." Must learn mm. the dark arts of mastering screen readers. Yeah, that one was actually, I haven't rewatched that <laughs> one. I usually rewatch our streams just out of curiosity to see how they were um, and to kind of ingrain whatever we talked about for the studying part. But I'm pretty sure that was a good one. I hope it was. I I'll probably have to rewatch it. <laughs> I need to go rewatch that myself. I love that, um, that phrase, though, the dark art of mastering screen readers. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would make a really good. Uh, episode of something i mean there are definitely some screen reader tricks that as i learn them i'm just like oh i just leveled up <laughs> no nah, like you you treat a screen reader like <laughs> i'll just be like what are you even doing whatever <laughs> um robo said between nvda and jaws which is more beginner friendly or better to just start with one that's an excellent question Hmm. You know, I started with Jaws, and so it's hard to, I don't know how I would have felt about NVDA if I'd started with that one, you know? I started with, what did I start with? Well, the screen readers that I used were education-based, so I was using, like, weird things called, like, talk and read and write and, like, Google ones. And then I think I used voiceover because I had a Mac and that's all I had at the time because my PC broke. And then I tried NVDA and then I tried JAWS. I mean, I tried JAWS like with patients who had it, but like I wasn't really teaching, teaching them. It's like they already had it and already knew how to use it. As far as testing, um, I think JAWS might have been the last one because it wasn't free. Yeah. And I didn't know about the 40 minute mode until I knew about it. And I was already <laughs> right. I feel like to me, Jaws feels more intuitive than NVDA, but I think that is probably a hundred percent just that I learned Jaws before I learned NVDA. Mm -hmm. They work pretty similarly. Um, Jaws has a great like help and training section um, where you can go through all sorts of topics. You could do trainings where they, they have someone actually reading them out loud. You don't actually just have to read the text if you're not one of those types of learners. Um, and so I do think their resources are great. They've got podcasts about how to use it and stuff. Um, but I know there's also resources on how to use MVDA. I just haven't gone through and found them. I really think they're probably pretty equal. Jump in and whichever one you start with, you'll learn and then be able to transfer those skills over to another screen reader. Exactly. Slightly different commands, but the commands are pretty similar between NVDA and JAWS, and you can certainly um, configure them to be even more so. It's like learning a language like JavaScript and then being able to kind of figure out Python, um, which is funny because Ghibli said, it reminds me of coding in general, just got to dive in and keep going, even if it feels like a lot at first. Yep. Yeah, that's a really good, yeah, that's a good analogy. Right. Um, Graham said, very similar experience, to be honest. Keys are similar. Settings are just a little bit more complex than JAWS. You can learn enough to get going with them for testing in about 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, another thing that I just remembered, which blew my mind when I learned about it, is JAWS, to me, is a little bit more complicated. It has more features, and you can write JAWS scripts. 
Like it has a, it's a whole thing. You can just do so much with Jaws and have it do whatever you want it to do, kind of. I don't know how to do it. I think, Dorlin, you know a little bit about scripting using Jaws, right? A little bit. Yeah, I've dabbled a little bit. But yeah, it's really cool. And it's really powerful once you do, like, figure it out. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. There, you know, I mean, there may be a way to do that in NVDA as well. I was just thinking, I can only assume that that's the case. It probably is. Um, yeah. But I, I actually don't know um let's see what else <laughs> liz said queen works i'm flexible <laughs> eds zebra joke dead um and then robosob said good to know graham wanting to start practice using those okay <laughs> okay i promise i will be there or i will be square yes talking about the link page Okay. <laughs> CJ said, I use a view app and noticed that for snack bar alerts, voiceover announces them, but it seems to be an inaccessible component because JAWS and NVDA can't process the alerts at all. Have y'all encountered these types of scenarios where one screen reader might detect something, but another may not? How do you approach fixing them? Yes, we've encountered that. Not that yeah, particularly, I but... I think especially when it comes to like your voiceover versus your DAWs or NVDA. So, cause I will <clears throat> decide what I like, if I need to interact with some website, I'm going to do it the way that's easiest for me. And if I'm running into barriers, cause it's not reading right on my PC, I'll switch over to my iPhone and see if it's going to read better on that. And it's, sometimes it does. And sometimes I'll start doing something on my iPhone and then I'll run into issues and I'll switch over to my PC and JAWS will work better with it. And so I can't think of any like specifics where there'd be like a notification that wasn't read by one that was read by another. But um, that's definitely a thing that's out there where that's why you should test. I mean, if you can test between different devices, you should be testing on, you know, a computer and a mobile device, ideally, right? Mm -hmm. And ideally using NVDA and JAWS or voice and voice, you know, like NVDA or JAWS and voiceover, kind of getting that right. um, wide range. Yeah, in general, best practice would definitely be to use multiple screen readers because of what you just said, right? Which is the fact that some screen readers re may read something that the other doesn't, just like we would use like Chrome and Edge and Safari, probably test between those because they're all kind of different. Um, as far as how to fix that, that's a great question. That's something that we'll probably be learning together, but I do not have the answer for that, unfortunately. And that's sometimes the part it where, does come down. Where, what'd you say? I was going to say, and sometimes it comes down to there being a bug with something because there have been voiceover bugs and there have been bugs mm -hmm. where, with something interacting weird with JAWS. And, you know, you have a team. JAWS is, I mean, they're owned by a larger company, but JAWS is focused on JAWS. And if um, Google, for instance, comes out with an update that breaks something in JAWS, the JAWS team is going to jump on that immediately and try and get us an update that's going to fix that. Um, and I know it's supposed to be kind of the same way for Apple, but voiceover is a subsection of Apple. You know, right. voiceover is not all Apple does by any stretch of the imagination. And unfortunately, sometimes they drop the ball on us. And um, so I think like generally jaw, you know, like I do find more things will fix more quickly with JAWS, but it might just come down to like something's broken and JAWS has put in the time to make a fix for it. Whereas mm -hmm. someone else hasn't or something. Um, I forgot what I was going to say, but uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll have to remember it. I was reading these mm -hmm. comments and lost my train of thought, but um, Liz also put a link to our study page. I'm going to add that to our little resource page and it's um a 11 y studygroup.com let's see what else did i put okay we're right here hmm. uh liz said jaws so the acronym for jaws is job access with speech for anybody um 
interested. Robodom asks, is NVDA more streamlined? Oh, I don't know if I would say that. Um, and Sino said, I started playing with NVDA more. Um, and I can't read boring text for too long without wandering. Liz said, Assistive Labs uses virtual machines to test with different screen readers in different environments. Um, let's see what else is on here. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> There's a lot of comments. <laughs> Okay, Liz said, I've switched to focusing on technical content writing for Career Path because now, now because the technical testing platforms aren't accessible. I was crying after my last one because I couldn't see. Oh. Um. <laughs> Holda said, I wonder how long it will take the DHS to update the course after 324. Might be forever. It might be. Um, oh, fingers said, crossed that it'll be April 1st, as they have promised. Yeah, we'll see. Oh. Karina said, what freaked me out was the message from DHS about everything on this computer is fair game for us to use against you. Paraphrasing, of course. So I had to stop all my illegal activities until I finished the final exam. What? Okay. Um, um, those like disclaimers though on government websites are pretty heavy duty. They're like, don't pretend like you have any sense of privacy. And <laughs> Lord. Uh, but um, your only option is I accept. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Liz said, so nice not to be assaulted at work or have desks thrown at me. Mm. Is this like a, pa like I have same. Hmm. I've had chairs, desks, pencils, all of it. Um, let's see what else is on here cat photos <laughs> oh ghibli said so his name is tank saw the big black dog for a sec he looks adorable y'all uh, whenever tank goes anywhere and and i'm with dorlin i get no play okay everybody's stopping <laughs> and looking at tank and being like oh my god look at the dog with his luxurious black coat um <laughs> He met a random person who bought him a toy last night on the internet. Like, oh, yeah. he, he draws him in. A Bloody Mary uh, squeaky, squeaky toy. toy. With the shrimp on it and the celery. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> we made a friend. Send pictures of that to all my bartender friends once Tank gets his Bloody Mary. Okay, so Sino also put a... Um, link in here that I'll add to our resource page, which is Deck University. We love Deck University. Mm-hmm. Great um, information about, there, guys. Is this about screen? Yep, about screen readers. Testing using screen readers. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've already got the link to Deck stuff in our resources, but for the new folks, we didn't haven't mentioned Deck at all this course and or this stream and if you are new and you haven't heard about DEQ, D E Q U E, you should check them out. And if you have a disability, they offer scholarships to get their courses. Um so because they're otherwise they're paid, but they're they're just such a good resource. So go check them out. Absolutely. Um Liz put an introduction to JAW scripting in here, a link. So I put that in there too. Oh yeah, I've read that article awesome. a few times. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Every time I'm that. like, I'm going to conquer this again today. And I end up at that article, do. I think. I get a little closer each time. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Jaws resources. CJ said, thanks, y'all. Sounds like operating system and devices make a difference. Got to test comprehensively. Yup. Yeah. Um, Liz also has a huge long list of resources on her webpage. We'll also link that. Nice. Oh, why isn't this working? Paste. Copy and pasta. 
<laughs> I did a brain dump while I was recovering. Well, thank you for that. Um, Wolven said, I've learned so much already on this stream, but my brain needs to decompress. I look forward to the next stream. I'm sure yeah, they're gone right enough. now. Um, <laughs> yes, my brain is broken too. We're all, we're like, we're going to be out of here by 630. It's 622. So we got like five more minutes um, that we'll kind of wrap everything up with. Um, Ghibli said, Tank deserves all the love. R rest in peace about anyone ever noticing you guys when he's out strutting with you guys. Yeah. Rest in peace for real. I'm, I'm not alive when Tank is in, when Tank is pressing. Nobody else exists as ever him, okay? <laughs> Ghibli said, as a bartender, I'd hook Tank up with a puppuccino. Aw, puppuccino, whipped cream oh. anytime. <laughs> Love it. Uh, for Liz said, FYI, anyone viewing the blog, there's a known issue for users with the prefers light theme where the browsers change the H2 to H6 levels with headings to pure black. Okay, no worries. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's interesting. Oh, oh my gosh. That was all of the messages. You so did far. it. <laughs> we did it. My throat hurts. I am done. Um, Have you hydrated? <laughs> I've just been, I've been dehydrating myself, drinking coffee at 6 p.m. So I'm probably not going to go to sleep today, but that's fine. Oh my goodness, you're funny. I've got my, my chai tea turned water. Yeah, I should have had tea instead. I don't know why I didn't do that. Um, Liz said, Tanks looks awesome in the cover photo. Yeah, I told Aww. Dorlin all about our cover photo and how awesome Tank looks. <laughs> He's gorgeous. All right, y'all. So to, to wrap it up, to wrap it up, we talked about a lot today. So I don't even know where to begin to wrap that up. But the gist of it all is we back. We back. Yay. Me and Dorlin are back. We're excited. We're energized. I now have actual free time to do a good job for everyone and manage the, the discord and manage all the little moving parts and do our streams as we should, which is nice. Um, and there goes, oh, there goes my guy back there. That's the one that I'm learning to do, uh, learning to drive stick for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my friend. Um, we're also going to, well, we'll see if we actually do this. This is our little tidbit, but um, he's also a, a developer, but he does like robotic stuff. So we're trying to like automate cat toys. We're going to, we're going to figure it out. We're going to, uh, we're going to build a robot, a cat toy robot. We don't, well, I don't know. I'm just saying we're going to do it. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Ghibli said learning to drive stick for him must be true love. Um, for him. No, for me, <laughs> not nah, for him. Cause I want to be able to actually take turns driving. And right now he has to do all the driving. Um, I feel kind of bad about that. And it would be nice to have access to a car. I don't really, I don't have a, I don't need a car, but it'd be nice. You could borrow it and come see me. I know. I was about to say, so I can go see my girl Dorlin. We start whipping it through the streets. She'll just tell me how to do it. We'll, we'll keep you mm -hmm. up abreast on how that goes. <laughs> uh, Ghibli said, you got this cat toy robot incoming. Yeah. Honestly, if we actually do this robot, we were all, we also want to automate gardening and that's a whole nother thing. Um, but if we do any of those things, I think I'm going to stream it and tell everybody about it because that would be fun. Um, Sino said, I wonder how much info he's absorbed hearing you talk. Okay, you want to know how much info he's absorbed? Remember when? <laughs> Remember when we did uh, disability etiquette? And we were talking about all the words not to say and how I constantly say lame and that's like messed up. Like anytime I say lame, which now is pretty much never because I get like roasted and whenever I say it, he's like don't say lame it's not a good word but yeah um he definitely knows uh, a lot about accessibility now he has no choice because we're on a three hour streams every week and he's usually <laughs> like on his computer being a nerd playing games or something playing Final Fantasy or League of <laughs> Legends all right um yeah that's it. Thursdays, first Thursdays, third Thursdays. We're in the building. We're talking about accessibility. Okay. And, uh, oh. we're going to keep it casual. We're going to keep it fun. We're going to keep it cool. 
Anything else, Dorlin, yep. that I missed? We'll be back. We'll be back April 4th then, right? Mm-hmm. Thursday, April 4th will be the first. Thursday, so cool. April I would do some semantic HTML and check yes. some stuff out. It's going to yes. be a good time. Uh, if you want to be on the stream, uh, especially if you're a developer, that'd be nice because then you can tell us if we're doing something wrong. Or if I forget how to build something specific, you can be like, it's easy. Just do this. Uh, Please let us know. We would love to have you on the stream. Um, Otherwise, for all the developers in the building, uh, please help us in the chat because we're going to need it. Um, And I know that you all will. So I'm excited about that. We'll help you with the accessibility part. You help us with the coding part, please. (laughs) Um, Sino said... Good guy, and yeah, he's just gonna osmos the, the DHS after all those all these streams. Yeah, I'm like, you might as well come build accessible robots. I don't know how that works, but I'm sure it's a thing. Um, Sino said, it gotta be gonna be ready for it without studying. <laughs> Robo said, deal. Um, and yeah, I'm talking about you, Robo. Please help us. Also, Robo, tell us if you want to be on the stream. You know, the people need to know who you are. But I feel you if you don't want to be on the stream. It's cool. All right, everybody. That's all we have. Um, We'll be back. Uh, And whenever we feel like doing casual streams like the ones we did today where we just pick a random topic and then we talk about it and do demos, that may be like in between those um, days that we're not doing the first and third streams. Oh, there goes Tank. (laughs) Uh, So in between those streams, we may have a random stream when we have like the extra time and energy and we'll do like an hour or two and do a demo. And I think that'll be pretty fun. Um, yeah. Karina said, if we want to help with the stream next week, should I DM you? Yes. Send me a message ASAP. Well, not ASAP literally, but like just, you can, either put it, you can even put it in the general chat on the, on the discord, put it anywhere. Cause I read everything on the discord when I have the time, I try to check it every day. Um, yeah, just re- either DM or in the general chat, whatever. We would love to have you, Karina. That would be so cool um, and so fun. So yes, please let us know. All right, friends. This has been so wonderful. Um, Seriously, I missed you guys. I missed everyone. Um, And I'm excited to be back. I'm super pumped, super energized, and just really happy that we have this nice creative space where everybody is just really about that life. Um, Ghibli said, thanks for the stream, both of you. Have a good one. Yes, everybody have a good one. We'll see you on the fourth. All right. Close said, thanks Africa, Dorlin and community. So glad we're back. Yes. So glad we're back. Maiden said, thanks you too. Robo said, thanks for the stream. Sino said, goodbye. Robo said, take care all. Sino said, we'll chat in Discord. Yes. So everyone, Discord, always open. Always hit me up there if you need me. If you want a coffee chat with me or Dorlin, let us know. I'll also put that in our Discord. I'll just put a little link with both of our calendars. Um, And if you want to have a coffee chat with both of us at the same time, we'll figure it out. I'm sure we could do that. All right. So see you in a couple weeks and enjoy the time. All right, y'all. Bye. Indeed. Bye.